My name is Natalie Fisk. I'm 30 years old. I make 65K a year and I'm the assistant general manager of New Hotel. New Hotel is a boutique hotel. It's part of about 20 different boutique hotels that Hersha Trust owns. Um, we have 93 rooms, we have three floors, uh, we're located um, in downtown Brooklyn, so we have pretty easy access to New York City and uh, various neighborhoods in Brooklyn. The assistant general managing position is really a position that's being trained for the general managing position. So for that position, uh, I have oversight over the accounting department um, just to make sure that all revenue is captured correctly. I manage the front office team to make sure guest service is perfect and that all of our guests are happy. Um, housekeeping to make sure all the rooms are being released on time and that all the rooms are clean. Um, engineering to make sure that we're um, you know, doing plenty of preventative maintenance and that all larger issues are being handled. And uh, oftentimes just uh, food and beverage as well, which we're trying to grow. Additional things that I do, um, I'm responsible for all hiring and all training um, as well. I I oversee the cultural engineering for the hotel as well. And that has a lot to do with the aesthetic of the hotel and just making sure that all the programming, um, all the new murals that co get completed in rooms and all that kind of more fun stuff uh, is, is in the same line and is, is part of what Hersha Hospitality is in line with what their, their motto is. For a position in hospitality, when you're hoping to be a general manager, uh, you do have a certain set of hours that um, go on your payroll that say that that's what you work and your and your one hour break is on there too. So on paper, I work Tuesday through Saturday um, from nine to five o'clock. Um, but being that it is a position where I am hoping to grow and I am hoping to be promoted, um, I'm available 24-7. Um, this means for midnight calls, if say something happens with the guests and the front desk is not sure how to handle it, um, that's one part of it. Also just touching base with the team in the mornings on my day off to make sure that they have the goals that they need to have. But mostly I'd say I get in, I wake up at about 6 to 6.30 every single day. Um, I'm at the hotel by around 8.15, 8.45 each day. And uh, the first thing I do is really just to open up my email box just to take a look at what's happened in the last eight hour, eight to, eight to 16 hours since I've been to the hotel, just to get a good pace on what's happening. We have um, a daily communication that goes out three times a day. It goes out at 3 p.m., 11 p.m., and 7 a.m., where a shift will kind of wrap up everything that's happened in the last seven hours, or the last eight hours, so we know what's going on. So I'll look at that to see what's happening with my guests. Um, from there, I'll look at a number of different things like our, our guest service satisfaction scores to see uh, what kind of new surveys we got, where we can improve. Um, I'll also take a look to ensure that some financial stuff is taken care of, like things like deposits, just to make sure we're keeping revenue on property. So there's a number of reports that I look at that gets very boring very quickly, so I won't go into that. And after we do that, it's really just preparing any notes that I have <clears throat> for the team for our 10 a.m. stand-up meeting, which we have every single day. Uh, that happens even if I'm not there. And it's a meeting where each department head will come up to my office and we will discuss the goals for the day, what things need to be accomplished, what projects are happening, what groups are coming in, what rooms need to be prepared, and at what time. Every, every Friday, I usually give a big pep talk about wedding groups because, you know, you have to get everybody excited about that. We do have two wedding parties coming in, which should be a slam dunk for us because it gets, starts to get challenging when there's more than three or four wedding groups in house. That's when it starts to get tough because a lot of the time the wedding groups aren't aware of each other and everybody at the front desk says that I'm, I'm just with the wedding, you know, I need this and that. And we're like, okay, great. Which wedding is it? So it's, it's a good pep talk to give them just so everybody's on board and, is excited about getting everything prepared for, for the guests and for the bride and groom. In the position that I'm in right now, there isn't a lot of travel required. I think once you start to work in the corporate office, you do have to travel to locations quite a bit uh, just to you know have meetings with different GMs and area general managers. So at that level, yeah, there is a lot of travel, but uh, currently for this position, no. But you, there can be also. If you're like, say for example, you're a front office manager and you make a decent salary and you decide, you know what? like. I really want to move to Spain or I really want to move to Japan. You can like, you know, find a hotel or ask your GM to connect you with maybe they have a contact of somebody. And you, it's a really good job if you want to travel um, and just get to know different locales. That's something I wish I had done a little bit more before I got so situated here in Brooklyn is like really just taking advantage of that because you can travel a lot if you want to. The range of what you can make in hospitality is... It varies depending on the market. So say you're working as a general manager and like 
a uh, small town in Ohio, your salary is going to be somewhere around 35 to 45 K because that's what makes sense for that market. But in a larger market like New York City, you are looking at, um, I'd say for a GM position, it's anywhere from 80 K to 120 K, depending on which hotel you're working for. Obviously the skills and traits you would need to do my job. Well, um, there's a number of them. I would say with any job, of course, having a strong work, work ethic is very important. Um, showing up on time is obviously very important. Um, that's a big part of it. I think your attitude is, is really also a very big contributing factor to your success. Um, it's very, I always say this to my employees when I, when things need to be improved, it's very easy to go into it an industry and very easy to go into a job and say, this isn't working. This isn't working. This isn't working. That's easy. Everyone's a critic. What's challenging is thinking of a way to do something more efficient and better than what was previously done that works well for the team as a whole. And so that's really learning how to see where you can improve and making that change. That's that's really the skill that you need to learn to, to be successful. For hospitality specifically, um, you need to be outgoing and you need to care about people. Um, I am not naturally outgoing. I have since I have that's a skill that I have, you know, learned. I, I being an, a, an artist, I'm very like naturally very reserved and just like I'm happy going home to like you know, pain and be quiet, but, um, but no, you, you learn to speak to people and you learn to develop a dialogue. That's a skill that I've learned. Um, and then just being compassionate and caring. I think hospitality, sometimes it's, it's very unpredictable and can be very challenging. And if you're not somebody who's naturally rewarded by doing well for others, um, you might not find as much satisfaction as you would in another profession. In regards to some other skills that you need for hospitality, specifically for being a general manager or assistant general manager, you have to have some skills in a couple of areas. Accounting is one of them, and this is a very important skill to have. Um, if any, if at whatever point people in the future are in a position to be speaking with, um, with ownership of the hotel, uh, nothing is really more important than the accounting and to make sure that we're meeting our financial goals and to make sure that we're keeping all of our records co uh, correctly. So it really is a system where you have to have uh, standards in place that are being followed and can be monitored on a daily basis. Uh, you can't have uh, things like, you know, people checking out without billing, without bills being closed or any of that kind of stuff. There needs to be sort of a very ironclad um, accounting department. So knowing about um, how to manage budgets, uh, knowing about uh, the whole process of accepting and receiving invoices, paying out invoices, um, all of that kind of oversight is very important, um, as well as uh, just managing finances in general. Like uh, the hotel has a number of different departments uh, that are categorized as far as like, you know, operating supplies or cleaning supplies or guest supplies and knowing what your budget is monthly for that and being able to to be within that budget, um, you know, is very important to be able to manage. And that has to do with inventory management. So accounting is a big, a big part of it. What I like most about this job, um, one is that it's different every day. At first, that was very challenging for me because I I was coming from a reservations department where everything was very similar every single day and it's kind of, you can get very frazzled, but now I really appreciate it because there's not a time that I'm not, I don't know, I guess it's just really mentally activating in that way. It's not, it's not boring. This job is, would never be boring, which is really great. But the other aspect I like specifically about my job is being able to bring my uh, creative knowledge to the hotel and being able to apply it in that way. Um, I love, you know, I love being an artist and I love artists in general. And I think that art really has a positive contribution to the world. And so I'm glad that in some way I can bring it into the hotel and, and doing that, whether it's through open calls for uh, murals or, you know, working with galleries for the lobby exhibition program, or currently right now I'm uh, trying to uh, get a proposal approved by my corporate um, team that has to do with working with the Gowanus Canal Conservancy, which is a nonprofit who takes care of the Gowanus watershed area. Um, they kind of maintain that. And so they have put together a really great proposal where they want to create planters and each one will feature a different Brooklyn neighborhood and we'll have local flora and fauna from that neighborhood in that planter. And I think that for guests who are only staying here for a day or two, to have something like that, that they can look out of their window and, or even go outside and visit eventually, it's such a nice, it's just such a nice detail for them to experience because they really get an idea of what, what Brooklyn is like and, and who are the people who really, you know, make Brooklyn run, like who are the organizations that make Brooklyn special and and so that's really, I really like talking about that. Anytime I can like go to a studio visit or meet an artist or talk about programming, that's, that's really where I, where I have the most fun because 
It just plays into my own personal interests. With hospitality, and if you're kind of learning on your feet, um, obviously mis mistakes are always going to be made. And that's just a part of life. I don't, I don't have, I have a very like liberal idea of what it means to be a failure. And I think it's actually very positive. Um, I don't really believe there is such a thing as failure or mistake, as long as you can learn from each experience um, and really learn from it. Like, you know, like if, for example, and this, you know, unfortunately is a true story. If you're really exhausted and had a long day and you go home without checking to make sure that the bride got her champagne um, and then the bride doesn't get her champagne and she tells her boss and then that's a very big thing. But what it, what it shows you is that within that process, there is room for improvement, which means that there needs to be a secondary layer where somebody besides myself, you know, or, or more people are involved in the process. So that way it's not just one person responsible for such an important task. And you kind of learn all these kinds of things as you go. Um, but it's never a mistake if you grow from it. If you do the same thing over and over again, I don't know about that. But but yeah, so I would say challenges is really just, you know, I mean, and there's a lot of uh, environmental challenges. And I mean that in the sense of, uh, you know, you don't have control over how long a building lasts, you know, <laughs> like you don't have control over the lifetime of an HVAC, you know, machine like that needs to cool. And so when things break, that's obviously out of my control, uh, but I can control by doing preventative maintenance. So there's learning opportunities there as well. Most of the challenges that I have here um, get resolved in a really nice way and I learn a lot from it. So mistakes don't happen as often, which is good. <laughs>